Hello! So, with all of the historic aircraft that have been released recently for Microsoft Flight Simulator, it kind of reminded me that I haven't recorded anything with the PMDG Douglas DC-6 for a long time. So, here we are at Duxford, and I've loaded the DC-6, and I thought for the benefit of those that maybe haven't seen the DC-6, we'll have a look at it in the same way I kind of do the, the first look video some, sometimes. We'll have a look at any airplane, we'll get it fired up, and we'll take it for a little flight. So we're at Duxford, we'll fly it down to South End on the coast. Uh, I just thought it might be fun to go and have a look, so you can see the quality of the modelling is really good and the surprising thing about this is this was one of the first third-party airplanes that arrived in Flight Simulator certainly the first one from PMDG before they moved on to doing the 737s so it's really really good you can see the, the quality of the rendering and the modeling of the various facets of the airplane is you know outstanding really the material modeling is really good You've got the battery here for the external power. And the, the modelling, you know, even up in the bays and the engine carolings is really, really good. And when you consider that this was one of the earliest aircraft that appeared in Flight Simulator, it makes it all the more surprising. So if we go, oh look, we have twins flying the aeroplane today apparently. <laughs> so if we come into the cockpit the the quality of the gauges and everything is fantastic as well so it's probably worth coming back behind the pilots and maneuvering this and going to a telephoto lens to show you just how much is in here because it all works or well, the majority of it does certainly but yeah the the modeling around the cockpit is absolutely stunning i'm just going to move the camera back to make it more like a normal field of view there we go. So yeah, so everything's modelled in three dimensions. Everything's really nicely modelled with really nice textures. And there's lots of ancillary, equi ancillary equipment around the interior of the aircraft as well. So you see lots of things like books and pilot hats and headsets. And if we go into the cabin, I'm just using the drone camera to do this, by the way. So the full cabin is modelled as well. You get several variants of the aircraft, actually. There's a cargo variant as well. So this is obviously the passenger variant. But it's on the whole, it's really, really nicely done. OK, let's fly back down through the fuselage. Back into the, the cabin and press insert and we're back in the pilot seat we'll put the xbox controller we use to control the drone view to one side so we're back in a normal control view using the mouse to drag the view around so how do we get this aircraft up and running so before we before we do that let's go and have a look at some features inside the aircraft so off to your side there is a tablet and in the tablet, you have this thing called the Ramp Manager, which is the switch, as you can see right here, where you can pre-configure you know, various features around the aircraft. So you can, if we go and turn on the tow bar and the tractor and the wheel chocks and the pitot covers and the engine oil pans, for example, and you can put mechanic stands on it and you can put the, uh, the front cabin exit opened and the, the stairs in place. To wait for that cabin to open so give it a few moments we can put the stairs in place we can open the cargo holds we could open the the main cabin exit and put the main cabin stairs on so if we wanted to go and have a look outside now you can see a whole world of stuff has appeared around the aircraft it's really nice isn't it so you've got the passenger entrance there as well So if we go back inside the aeroplane and we go and remove the stairs and the exit, you have to wait a few moments for some of these things to animate. So if we were to press, well actually I think the sim's, no it hasn't locked up, it's just being 
a little bit recalcitrant about doing anything at the moment. So get rid of those stands, get rid of the oil pans, get rid of the pitot covers, get rid of the wheel shocks, get rid of the tow bar. And if we close the... So they're just stowing the stairs, I imagine. And then they'll close the doors. So everything has animations. It's really nice. You see the, the, the ladders would fold down if we had caught them in time. Um, anyway, so let's go and jump back inside. So that's the ramp manager that just does the basic static configuration. You've got the fuel load manager, so you can fill the tanks up with whatever you want. Uh, it has a huge range. Uh, there's an automated flight or sorry, artificial flight engineer. So if we were to use this and to flick any of the states of the aircraft we want it in, you would hear the flight engineer going through the checklist and you would see the switches moving around the cockpit. And it's a really good way if you're, you know, maybe you're interested in how things work, but maybe you, you know, you don't want to invest hours and hours in learning how to operate the airplane properly. You can use the flight engineer to get the aircraft ready for takeoff and for cruise and so on and so forth. Okay. Also, there's the maintenance manager. So this aircraft does consume consumables. So, you know, the engines have wear and tear. It goes through oil. It goes through fluids. So you need to bear that in mind when you're flying it. So or before you take off, you need to go and check the consumables. It also has this thing called the engine stress visualizer. We'll come and have another look at this a little bit later. But it shows you whether you are running the engine engines badly. So it's a bit of a summary. You can get the same data, obviously, by looking at the dials on the, the in the cockpit because they all work. So everything works accurately. And it's actually got a really, really good engine simulation. OK, so let's go and get this thing up and running, shall we? So we're going to use a combination of keys and moving around the cockpit. So control six takes us overhead. The first thing we want to do is go and turn the ground power on. So that's over here. And if we go and you can see the two switches here. So we can switch at the moment. It's using plain battery. If we go to ground power, this light comes on and this is the master power switch for the aircraft. So this turns the power on essentially. So then on the left side, we can go and turn on the beacon light and put the position light on ready. We can turn on the seatbelt sign and the no smoking signs. So then over here, we can go and turn the inverters on. And then engine instruments is next to inverters and we can switch that to normal. So then we can turn all the generators on for the engines ahead of starting them. So as soon as they do start, they'll be generating electricity, which would be good. We can open all of the cowl flaps. So further down, just above the pilot's eye line, is the cowl flap controls. So we twist them all to fully open. So if you're not aware, the cowl flaps are these flaps around the edge of each engine. Okay. So then go overhead and we can go and set up the cabin pressurization. So it's over here. So the way this works, if we set the, the flight, whoops, we set the flight level using this small knob. And you will notice if we go like past 10,000 feet, suddenly the cabin pressure starts to climb. So in other words, if we wanted to fly at say 10,000 feet, it's going to pressurize the cabin to 1,000 feet. If we went to 12,000 feet, suddenly it's going to do 2,000 feet in the cabin. Yeah, so we're going to get no higher than maybe 5,000 on our little flight today. So we'll leave it there. So then we can go and turn the radios on. So they are just in front of the pilot's and co-pilot's eye line. So we just go and turn the, the knob on each one for the volume. So it works the same as the real things. Can turn on GPS, let it capture the satellites. We're not going to actually be doing any proper navigation today. We're just going to be using the gyro pilot a little bit just to show you how it works. Um, 
so we've got the fuel selectors to do next so control and three will take us down the fuel selectors are over here so this is how you select the fuel tanks so we move them all the way forwards and those are the main tanks yeah so then control seven takes us overhead to the left and the one we're interested in here is the cabin master heater so we'll turn that on then control and five will take us back to the levers at the back of the cockpit we're going to move the mixture levers here the ones with m on we're going to move them all the way up by rolling the mouse wheel on them so you'll notice they can go to idle auto lean or auto rich so for takeoff we're going to go to auto rich and then once we're in cruise we'll go to auto lean so then we are now going to start the engines and this is kind of the fun bit so there's this whole bank of switches overhead so we've got the fuel booster pumps here you've got the starter or the ignition switches here and you've got the magnetos down here well i say i called them ignition you've actually got this the start master switch for each engine you've got fuel boost for the starter that's not the same as the fuel boost pump um, and then you've got priming as well so what you do is you set your engine selector say to engine number one make sure i've got my parking brake on when i do this so we've got engine selector set to engine number one we hit start oh no before we do that sorry we're going to go and turn the, the boost pump on for engine number one this is the problem of talking and doing i always make mistakes when i do this so fuel boost pump pump on for engine number one hit start three prime it six boost Nine. wait for 12 12 and magnetos to both so what the co-pilot was doing was counting the blades going round with the engine spinning up so let's just go and do the others so we can take the boost pump back to off for engine number one engine selector engine number two boost pump on engine number two we can start three prime Six. Boost. Nine. Twelve. And both. And we should find we've got two engines running now. Perfect. It's a shame that this moves the, the view each time you do it. So then we're going to go for engine number three. Okay, so start. Three. Prime. Boost. I wonder if you can get away with doing it early. You can. It was a bit more sluggish at kicking, wasn't it? So it does pay to wait. Then engine number four. And start. Three. Prime. Six. Boost. Magnetos to both. And we have four engines. Four good engines. So we then pull the engines back. So I had the throttles open. That was a, a mistake. Should have been on my checklist. I'll have to add that to my checklist, actually, to make sure the throttles were idle. So we were running the engines up really hard then. Which would have done them no good whatsoever. You can damage the engines in this thing. So you notice the, the entire... All of the dials and the needles in them are shaking. So you can get oscillations happening going through the cockpit, which will, you know, shake the cockpit to pieces. It's quite entertaining sometimes. So we've got the engines up and running. So then we're going to go overhead and we're going to go and switch that battery over now to use the plane batteries instead of the ground power. That also means we can now come down to the tablet, go to the ramp manager and switch back off that ground power unit, which means it will disappear from outside. So essentially we are ready to taxi, but we can't until we release the gust lock. So there's a gust lock here which locks all the controls in place, and we can't manipulate the primary flight controls until we've done that. So we also need to just have a little double check around then. So propeller RPM is on maximum, and mixtures are on rich. We haven't done the flaps yet, so let's do this a flap lever over here, so you can see the flaps travelling outside. 
So if we just sit here on the parking brake just for a moment, just so I can open the engines up and you'll hear how awesome this thing sounds. Okay, so off the parking brake. So as we taxi out, we're just going to go and turn the position lights to flashing now. You see the plane is slowly getting some momentum. It absolutely dwarfs these little GA aeroplanes, doesn't it? So we're going to look from outside and see what I mean. Absolutely beautiful aeroplane there. Okay, so we're going to taxi out to the runway here at Duxford. It's big old rumbly engines. Look at the the fascia shaking. <laughs> it's very cool. So we can sit up in the cockpit as well, so we get a better view of the taxiway. So we're not going to play with GPS today, but we will have a play with the gyro pilot to show you the basics of how it works. It'll make this video far too long if we start playing with capturing um, GPS routes or VOR radials, which the gyro pilot can do. As I said earlier, considering this came out so early in the life of Flight Simulator, it's actually quite stunning just how good it is. And it still really shows up all of the aircraft of this era that have come out since. It is very, very good. Okay, so we're going to open the engines up. We're not going to go to any more throttle than that. Just looking at the manifold pressure gauges down here. So a bit of left rudder to hold the centre line. We're watching. You'll notice the plane will get light on its feet or on its wheels. So we're going to start to ease back. And we're in the air. It almost flies itself. It's very good. So gear up. Let's go and see that happening. flaps up a notch. You will notice as well just how fast this aeroplane is. So we're coming up to 120 knots. So notice we just took off as well without the fuel boost pumps. If you want to do a steep climb out obviously you can use them. Okay. So let's have a look around. So we're just coming up to a thousand feet. Looks like we have got a, um, a radio mast tuned in by accident. Is this operating in? It's in GPS mode. That's interesting. Okay, so I'm going to do an about turn because if we have a look, quick look at the map see we're leaving ducks for basically on the same direction we left so we want to go 140 degrees ish to get to south end so we'll start a left turn doing about 140 knots at the moment we're still climbing 1500 feet a minute so we're going to take the RPM back a bit so you can see the RPM gauges here for the four engines you can see fuel flow is varying you do get variances between the engines and it kind of ends up giving you post-traumatic stress disorder you start obsessing over whether the needles are 
looking okay or not. So we can give it a bit more throttle to get the manifold pressure into the green. So it's all about managing the engines in these big old aeroplanes, and especially if they're modelled accurately, like as this one is. It's almost a, a, a second game in its own right of looking after the aeroplane. So we've got a gyro compass here so we can straighten up. I'm just going to trim the aeroplane out so I'm not having to do anything to it. Okay, so now the plane's going in a straight line. We can show you the gyro pilot. So the switch for it is here. So you lift this switch and then there's a clutch here. We pull the clutch and it grabs hold of the control surfaces. And by default, it will just continue on the direction it was going. If we flick the right hand switch, it will do altitude hold. I've raised the flaps as well now because we are top of climb and otherwise we'll um, overstress the flaps. I think this aircraft will automatically raise the flaps as well when it gets too fast. Um, so yeah, we've, so we've essentially got, with the gyro pilot, we have got wing levelling going on and altitude hold. If we want to turn the aircraft, we have a master control here of turn rate. So we can just roll it. If we do that while, if I come down in the cockpit a little bit, so you can see outside and see the attitude indicator, I'm going to roll this gently three, four clicks to the left. And you can see the aeroplane's gently banking and it's starting to turn. Okay, so we're turning towards our track that we want it to be on. So then if we go back the other way, go a few clicks to the right. So we actually want to be on a 145 degree track, don't we? So let's go and keep an eye on that on the compass. So when we get near to 145, we can hit the big silver button, which will centre the turn controller. So we're just coming 135, 140. One four five, so we centre it up. It takes a moment for it to level up, obviously, because it's all driven by gyros, so you just need to think in advance all the time. So if you want to manipulate your altitude, you can turn off the altitude um, hold, and you can use this roller wheel, and that will manipulate your um, climb rate. So again, we're climbing at 500 feet a minute at the moment. Look, we're just coming up through 4,500 feet. Another thing you might want to do while you're in cruise is pull the mixtures back. So they were on rich, remember? So we'll just pull them back one notch to auto lean while we're in cruise. So again, I'm, I'm doing things obviously out of order and not following procedure here. I'm more interested in showing you the things you can do. So you end up, when you're in flight, looking at the, the various dials and just, you know, managing the situation all the time. That's going to be your primary concern, is looking at pressures and fuel flow and RPMs and temperatures just making sure the aeroplane's in a good place. And then you need to read the book, basically. The Pilot Operating Handbook for this is very, very good. And it gives you all the strategies to, to deal with situations. And obviously, if you, have, if you can't find an answer, you can always go online and ask other people. And there's been a lot written about this aeroplane and how best to manage the engines. So it's not such a big problem. Look how fast we're going. Doing two... 10, 220 knots. So at altitude, it can go faster than that even. It's a very, very quick aeroplane. But then we've got four great big engines. So we're whistling in towards London South End, where we're going to land. The wind today is on the ground at South End. Let's have a look. 290 degrees, 10 knots. So we can have a crosswind but it's not too strong a wind. So what we're going to do is turn away then 
from the airfield. We use the gyro pilot to do it. Let's put the altitude hold back on because we're still climbing, remember. So we just got to 5,000 feet, which is what we were kind of aiming for anyway. So let's go and put a few clicks of left turn on the gyro pilot. And get it turning. So it's worth pointing out at any point, if we were fed up with controlling the airplane ourselves, we could go to the automated flight engineer and we could ask him to prepare the plane for cruise, for example, and he will do all of the checks, not just the functional ones I'm doing. You'll hear him checking all sorts of things around the aeroplane. So I'm deliberately not doing everything. So I'm level it up now. As you can see, we're now flying out towards the approach for south end. So we want to come back down now. So we're going to come back off the throttles a bit. We could do this either by reducing the throttles or reduce the RPM to slow down. And then we're going to use the pitch control down here. Keep an eye on the climb right here. So we can go a bit steeper than that. So our manifold pressure remains the same, but we're just um, manipulating the RPM. Okay, coming down to 4,000 feet. So because we're going to be approaching soon, we'll go and put the mixtures back onto Rich. So we're going to pull, increase the RPM, but also pull back the throttles to, to see how that affects us. So we are losing airspeed now. So it's all about knowing your aeroplane really. So coming down to 3,000 feet. We're going to be making the turn in towards South End in a moment. So let's come off the autopilot. So you hear a, a bell when you do that. Or come off the gyro pilot, I should say. So we're just pulling out of our descent at 3,000 feet. We could play games with the ILS, couldn't we? So ILS is 111.35, okay. So let's go and set that up. So if we go and press over here, 111.35. We've now got ILS showing on the nav radio. So 233 degrees we want for the Omni bearing selector. So I don't think this will have any bearing on it with it being ILS. So we've just flown over the centre line. But it's good to have that visual reference. So you can see, look, we're off. We're overshot. So let's go do quite a steep turn. So there's the runway directly in front of us. So it's just about speed and 
managing the aeroplane now. So let's pull the engines back to idle, just out of interest to see how much we can get the speed to come off. So in the wheels can come down, that will in induce a lot of drag. Dropping the flaps to the first stage. We'll hold the aircraft at about 100 knots if we can. So we're now on full flaps. The um. Ah, oh, did we go and switch? that to VOR. No, we didn't. I was wondering why this hasn't come alive. Again, it's probably me being rusty, but... A bit low. And we're a bit slow. Luckily, this aeroplane has bags of power. You can see, look at it, it just suddenly comes alive as soon as you open the engines up. So you can see the Pappy lights now, so we can use those as a guide in the absence of the ILS, which is good. Back out to the sort of speed we want it to be at. There we go, we've got two reds and two whites now on the Pappy lights. Now we're too low again. And we're back on track again. A little bit low. Back on track. Okay, can we let it roll long, let it bleed off some speed, and we can use the wheel brakes as well. It stops remarkably quickly actually, look, the brakes are very powerful. So let's turn off to the taxiway. On the way in, we can go and turn the uh, position lights to solid again. taxi in. Let's sit up so we can see where we're going. Oh, we've got a, a unique camera view there. Where are we going to fit between the trees? <laughs> I think we just got a few leaves in the the right hand aider on there. I think parking's at a premium today, isn't it? go behind the um, the biplane here. OK, 
could have gone over there, couldn't we? Oh well. It's a wonderful aeroplane though, isn't it? So well modelled. Okay, parking brake on. So we never really played around with too much to do with engine management. We could have closed the cow flaps on route and done a lot of other things. You know, playing with superchargers. It has superchargers. You can use them at altitude. Um, it's it's very very good. But yeah, it's there's a lot to take in to be honest with this aeroplane. It takes a while to get your head around. You know what it can do, what it has. So yeah, you've got the supercharger controls over here. I've momentarily forgotten where they were. Um, but yeah, it's very, very good. Okay, so how do we cut the engine on this? An obvious way, as is normal with these things, is to just cut off the mixture. So we can pull the mixture across the board and that will run the propellers down. And they'll obviously freewheel to a stop. We can go and put, we could put the gas lock back in. We can shut the fuel valves off as well. And then overhead, we can just go and turn everything back off. So magnetos off, generators off. Go back to using the ground power, which I'm not sure if that switch is integrated at all into the plane management. No, it isn't. So if we put the ground power unit on, we've now got ground power. So that should be lit back up, and it is. So then we can go and make sure all the switches are in the off position so the inverters can come back off. That's interesting, look. They've got a standby setting as well. So turn the position lights off, turn the beacon light off, turn the cabin heating off that we had on earlier. And we're probably pretty good to go. Obviously, in the if you're doing it properly, by the book, you would be um, following a checklist. Which there are numerous checklists for this aeroplane around. So I've done my usual trick of writing up just a functional one to get the aeroplane up and running. But yeah. Put the cow flap switches back to zero. And there we go. Oh, we need to turn the radios back off and then turn the power off. So turn off that one, turn off this one, turn off this one. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, I've done it again. My mouse skills are failing me today. Um, and then the power up. So you can just go and turn off the master power to the aeroplane up here and you can see all of the avionics suddenly die. And then if we want to get off the aeroplane we can obviously go and play games with the front cabin exit. So if we do that we'll see the door open. Just trying to get this in a nice place with the camera to, to show you this. And then do the stairs. And then a railing will materialise. There it goes. It's very cool, isn't it? So then you've got the main cabin exit. And if we pan around, you'll see that one opening. And the main cabin stairs are apparently going to happen automatically. Oh no, we have to click on it. There we go, and it just materialises. Okay, so there you go. The DC-6. There's a lot more to it than I have shown today. And obviously, in terms of engine management, I was only scraping the surface. I was just, you know, sh giving you a, a functional demonstration of some facets of it. We obviously didn't do everything by the book. So before anybody jumps on me saying, oh, you didn't do this, or you did that in the wrong order, that wasn't the point of today. It was just to show that it has these features and that you know you control you can control mixtures and 
RPMs and throttles and the engine simulation is actually probably one of the best in the entire simulator. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you enjoyed that. So that was the DC6 from PMDG, which I don't think I've ever really covered properly on the channel before. So go have a look at it. Go Maybe go and buy a copy of it. If you're into this sort of aeroplane, it's probably the best of its type in the simulator by quite some distance. The flight model is wonderful as well. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. See you again soon.